All right. Yes, we're here live on air. God bless each and every one of you for tuning in to today's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. I'm your host, evangelist Anita Rivera. It is March 22nd, 2024, and I have a look, I have a report to share with you all that I've just been beside myself on. Um, terribly concerned. I know we're living in the last days. It doesn't make any it doesn't make it any better that I know that we're living in the last days and these things are expected to come to pass according to biblical prophecy. It doesn't make me feel like, oh well, it's not a big deal. I already knew it was gonna happen. No, seeing this come to its stage, if you will, to its set time, if you will, it is terribly, terribly grieving. So much so that I need to start off today's broadcast with a particular portion of scripture to lay the foundation. So that you'll know exactly why I'm saying what I'm saying. And I'm going to get you right into the article that we're going to talk about. When I say article, when I say headline, this is not something that is to be taken lightly. I scour the internet. I, I, I scour, uh, you know, and, and I do my research with particular world events that are happening in present time. That is happening right now that signifies that we're living in the last days and that the day of the Lord is at hand that proclaims the words of Jesus Christ, uh, just as he said would take place according to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24, that these will be the signs of the times and the end of the age. And he detailed it with particular signs. So the headlines I bring to you showcase the signs that Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, declared over 2,000 years ago. The one we're going to be talking about, the one that has, it's, it's very grieving, very terrible. And I'll explain here why Please, if you have not listened to any of my broadcasts in recent times, please give, give special, uh, uh, please give special attention and needful hearing to this report, to the entirety of this report. Father God, I give you praise for uh, being my my mouthpiece, for for speaking your word in my heart and speaking it through my spirit to to to, to bring it forth to these people, so that they can understand what you're saying, what you're declaring, what you're showing us as Christians in these last days, because we're truly living in the last days. Have them to see it the way you've called them to to understand it, so that there will not be any excuse come to time that we have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, having to give an account as to all that we are required to, according to your word, in Jesus' name. The headline I want to share with you here in a moment, a massive altar for the red heifer sacrifice has been constructed in the nation of Israel. This report coming out within the past 48 hours. Listen, I, I, I have, I've looked into it. I've, I've got, I got soundbite for you. And, and all that I've heard has just, I've been, I'm, I've, I'm sore. I'm just going to say it that way. I'm, and I think it is best described here in the scripture. Uh, it, it is placed in my heart to share with you this following scripture based on this particular report. Psalm chapter 22, starting in verse 1, says the following, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so, so far from helping me? And from the words of my groaning, Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. In the night season, and am not silent. But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised by the people. All those who see me ridicule me. They shoot out their lip. They shake the head saying, he trusted in the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. But you are he who took me out of the womb. You made me trust while on my mother's breast. I was cast upon you from birth. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Come on. Let's continue. You got to hear this. Many bulls have surrounded me. Strong bulls of Bashan have encircled me. They gape at me with their mouths like a raging and roaring lions. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It has melted within me. 
My strength is dried up like a pot shirt and my tongue clings to my jaws. You have brought me to the dust of death for dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I count, I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them and for my clothing, they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far from me. O oh, my strength, hasten to help me, deliver me from the sword. My precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. Listen, who are we talking about here? Who, who, what is this particular portion of scripture that I just read for, for you in the book of Psalm chapter 22, starting in verse 1 all the way to 22? Who is that talking about? Listen, it is talking about the suffering and the posterity of the Messiah. Whew, hallelujah. Listen, when I say the Messiah, I'm not talking about the one that many are expected to come. But they're going to get the Antichrist, the beast system. Now we know, we know that Jesus Christ will come again. We know that the day of the Lord is at hand, but it, he will not come the way that many people right now are expecting him to come, that they are anticipating him to come. They're not even calling him Jesus, the second coming. They're just calling him the Messiah for the sake of not offending particular Jews. Now listen, the Jewish people, may the Lord bless them. May the Lord give them uh, eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, that we're living in the last days. That Jesus Christ is Lord God of heaven and earth. He is the King of all kings. He is the Lord of all lords. He is Yeshua HaMashiach. He is the one who was and who is and who is to come. He's the one that came over 2,000 years ago. He is the one that was prophesied by several prophets, one of one of which being the prophet Isaiah, according to the prophecy in chapter 51 and chapter 52. This is the one that I was just sharing with you, a Psalm of David in Psalm chapter 22 from the chief musician himself, the one whom God laid the government upon his shoulders, according to the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. So when I say the Messiah, I'm talking about the one that came over 2,000 years ago, the one that was born from the Virgin Mary. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. The one who was the very propitiation of the sin of all mankind. The one who came as the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. The one who was in the beginning with God, according to the Gospel of John chapter 1 and the book of Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's the Gospel of John chapter 1. In the beginning God made the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. The word God in Hebrew being Elohim, plural for a reason, Mel, plural, in reference, speaking of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Oh, there's three gods. No, there's not. There's only one. One times one times one equals three. No, it does not. One times one times one equals one. And I like that it is times the, the letter X, uh, uh, you know, numerically speaking, the number 10 representing the Ten Commandments, which is holy. Listen, I share all this with you because what I've heard, what I'm, what I'm, what I read the report and what I heard with the sound, but I'm about to share with you has grieved me greatly and, and this has been things that God has been showing me since 2019 things are accelerating in the spirit things are accelerating in the natural the only reason why it's happening in the natural is because it's already laid a foundation for itself in the spirit it is wanting to 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 bring forth the child if you will the birth of the baby if you will but it's not the one who came already over 2,000 years ago According to, again, according to the prophecy, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. I'm not talking about that prophecy. That was already fulfilled over 2,000 years ago when Jesus came. I'm talking about another birth. I'm talking about one that will uh, bring forth the end of all things. This is why we must be sober in our prayers, because truly the end of all things is at hand. 
This is a birth of a child, uh, it, but, 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 but it is according to end time biblical prophecy that this child is not a regular child. It, 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 is, it is what the Bible describes as sin, and it will uh, grow itself as a beast, if you will. Now, please let me share with you partic the particular portion of scripture in the book of James, chapter 1, verse uh, 12, blessed is a man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it, listen, listen, this is the part I'm talking about. It's already been ruminating in the spirit. It's about to come forth in the natural. That's why, all, that's why the stage is pretty much set. It's, it's all but set, friends. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. That's the baby. That's the child. That is to come. Now we know that sin has been in the world since the very beginning, since the fall of man, according to the book of Genesis chapter 3. But this is a sin that reached its fullness, according to the prophecy of Daniel. And now it says here, when it gives birth to sin and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. When it is full grown, it, it brings forth a great beast. Uh, I, I use the word lion because we know that God, Jesus Christ, is the lion of the tribe of Judah. For others, they don't believe that. They say, no, he is yet to come. We, we have yet to see our Messiah. The reason why I use lion, though, when it comes to sin, in this portion of scripture found in James chapter 15 is because the Bible says that the devil walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That's found in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. If you would allow me to read to you that portion of scripture verbatim. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. This is why I use a lion when it comes to giving birth to that sin that will be full grown. And when we talk about the beast system that will be established in the last days, it will be with a false messiah, that will look like a lamb, but will speak like a dragon, according to the book of Revelation, chapter 13. Verse 11, Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and spoke like a dragon. And he, executes, he, he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. It will be a mimicking of God the Father, the first beast, and God the Son, the second beast. And then it will also be a terrible mimic and blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which will represent, according to Revelation chapter 16, verse 14, excuse me, let's read it in context, verse 13, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the, to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. In the midst of all these things taking place, this great end time deception, these, these, the, these final days that we're living in, the signs of the times, Jesus warns us, he, he reminds us of the following in verse 15. Behold! I am coming as a thief, blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. What does Jesus mean by this? That he keep his garments. That you keep your righteousness. 
He proclaimed in the gospel of Matthew. He says that the kingdom of God is not. It, 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 he, excuse me. I want to make sure I'm saying this correctly. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added on to you. The garment is our garment of righteousness. The garment is our garment of praise. The garment of holiness. Our right standing in God because of what Jesus did for us. Our oil, our anointing, our new life, our, 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 our seal of redemption, our armor, according to Ephesians chapter 5. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments. You can't keep your garment unless you're watching. He says, what I tell you, I tell all, watch. He says this throughout the scriptures, particularly found in, God, in the gospel of Matthew chapter 24 with regards to the end times. In the gospel of Luke chapter 21. What I tell you, I tell all, watch. We're to be watchmen on the wall, according to the words of Ezekiel, the prophet, in chapter 33. What I tell you, I tell all, watch. When you're watching, you're being vigilant. When you're watching, you're not going to let your house be broken into. When you're watching, you're already aware, you're privy of the times that we're living in. You're standing in the evil day, having done all to stand. And now your garment will not be taken. You're able to keep it. But here, Jesus is warning us, this is how you keep it. You watch, and when you watch, you're able to keep your garment, lest when you walk naked, lest when you walk, you'll be walking naked, and they see your shame. Now they see that you're not even born again. They see that you're not even saved. You weren't even serious about the things of God. You were able to be robbed of your right standing because you fell for a lie. The Bible says that the word of God is established forever. Lies but for a moment. Don't let that moment steal what God has established forever from, your, from the covenant that you have with him. Because I'm going to tell you something. There is a great thing that is happening right now. That is being prepared to literally cause people of the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ to deny their faith in Jesus to deny their right standing in Jesus Christ unto the Father. To deny the seal of redemption brought forth by the Spirit of God when they became born again. They are literally, uh, they, they, there is a, a, a time uh, uh, that is happening right now that is in, in, it, it is preparing for a great falling away. Now we know there's already been a great falling away taking place, but this will be the sucker punch. This will be, if you will, kind of like the knockout punch. It's, it's gonna, it's gonna sucker punch so many because everybody's gonna be for it in the church, quote unquote. It's gonna be so obvious. Well, sister so and so that's been in the Lord for forty years, she's for it. She won't say Jesus anymore. She'll just say the Messiah because she was able to see him at the Mount of Olives, in, 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 you know, four months ago. Because listen, they're think they're they are they're they're waiting for the Messiah to rebuild the third temple. They have the red heifers. They already have the place of sacrifice. They already have it all prepared, and they're saying, "Well, it's not really a sacrifice. It's just a ceremony." Really, really, you could you could play others. They want they want to make sure they don't do an offense and on the name of unity. But you're not going to play everybody on this. This is a direct blasphemy, and I'm going to call it what it is, an abomination in the sight of God. And this will literally usher in the day of the Lord. Now, I've been talking about the last days ever since uh, the Lord has appointed me and anointed me for this full-time evangelistic ministry approximately 14 years ago and counting. And the day of the Lord is a word that God gave me upon establishing the work of the ministry here. So when I say the minister, or excuse me, when I say the day of the Lord, this is very serious. It's a terrible day. This will literally usher in the day of the Lord. This false teaching uh, that Christians are buying, that, that, that they are willing to exchange the truth for a lie. The truth being Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man gets to the Father except through me. And they're going to exchange it for the lie, saying, well, that wasn't the Messiah that came over you know, 2,000 years ago. He was Jesus, I guess. He existed. Uh, but he was a political figure. He was kind of causing trouble. He was really against the Roman Empire. He was really against the, fad, you know, the, you know, the law of God, going to get up against the Pharisees and the Sadducees, declaring that love was a, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the principal thing and, 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 and you know, for us to have faith in him rather than the Almighty. And he was a heretic. So, yeah, now that this actual Messiah, the new Messiah has come in this year, 2024, 2024. 25 whenever they're going to you know decree and declare it because it will happen before we know it in this time 
That's to Jesus, but we can't say Jesus because we want to, you know, we don't want to offend him with that false heretic that we thought came over two thousand years ago that we thought was the Messiah. I knew it. You know how many Christians are gonna say it? I already knew. I already knew he wasn't the real one. I already knew. I just went to church. So I was just, you know, just in case. But I already knew it. Oh, that boils God's blood. Oh, the righteous anger of the Lord is set forth. Listen, okay. Let, let me get into the article so we can understand what evangelist is talking about. Let me get into the article. Some of you are probably thinking, what are you talking? Why are you so, why are you very excited about this? Why, why does this have you all up in arms, evangelist? I don't understand. Let me get into the article and the soundbite so that you will understand. According to the most important news.com, a massive altar for the red heifer sacrifice has been constructed in the nation of Israel. Let me pull my laptop closer to me. Since the time of Moses, only nine red heifers have been sacrificed. Now a massive altar for the 10th red heifer sacrifice has been built in the nation of Israel and they are decreeing and declaring in the most recent national prayer and repentance breakfast luncheon meeting thing that they had recently that um, the 10th red heifer to be sacrificed will finally usher in the Messiah. This is their belief. When I say they, I'm talking about not just Orthodox Jews, but I'm talking about Christians in the church mingling together, believing something that truly is contrary to the teachings and the finished work of Jesus Christ. There is a tremendous amount of speculation that it could happen soon. So let me give you a bit of history. Let me back up a bit. September 2022. Five red heifers were flown from the state of Texas to the land of Israel. I happen to be here in the state of Texas. Uh, broadcasting live right now in San Antonio. Since that time, one of them has been disqualified, but the other four continue to be candidates for a red heifer sacrifice, or what they're dubbing it, ceremony. As was discussed just last week, there was a practice run of the purification ceremony in 2023 that I actually reported on, on one of my broadcasts at the time. But an official ceremony must be conducted, they're saying, before the heifers get too old to be used for such a sacrifice. So now the question is, will a red heifer be sacrificed in Israel this year, 2024? According to CBS News, a massive altar has already, begun, has, has already been constructed. It's not under construction, it has already been constructed. And in the soundbite I'm about to share with you, you're gonna hear about it. Let me pull it up right now. Make sure that we have sound. Here it is. The cows he's talking about at a secure, undisclosed location are these. Red heifers, to be precise. Some Jews and Christians believe they're the key to rebuilding the historic Jewish temple in Jerusalem and to beckoning the Messiah. To understand, you have to go back nearly 2,000 years when the ancient Ro Romans destroyed the last temple in the city. To rebuild it, these believers point to the Bible's book of Numbers. It commands the Israelites to sacrifice a red heifer without defect or blemish, and that has never been under a yoke. Only then can the temple rise again. Caring for them on an Israeli settlement in the West Bank is Yitzhak Mamo. So we have here, uh, after a long research we find in uh, Texas. In Texas? Uh, yeah, yeah, Texas, United States of America. Texas Red Angus flying them 7,000 miles to Israel. This is not a publicity stunt. Well, what do you mean? Meaning, this is something you take very seriously. Harry Potter is a good story. The Bible is not story. The Bible is a way of God to lead us. Is that big, A massive altar already awaits where the heifers are to be burned. According to some believers, the ceremony needs to be performed right here on the Mount of Olives, looking directly into where the temple once stood. But something else now stands in its place. The Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque, among the holiest sites in Islam. Today, only Muslims are allowed inside, but that's not stopping Jewish activists outside. Six days a week, Melissa Jane Kronfeld leads groups from around the world who defiantly pray. 
as close as armed guards permit. How about the destruction of Islamic holy sites? Is about preserving this place and being guardians over the house of God for all people. So you're happy with it where it is? No, it's going to go 100%. But I believe it's going to it, go. It's 100%. Yeah, the whole thing's going to go. We have to build a temple. When you say that Dome of the Rock has to go, MJ, it's hard for me to imagine something more incendiary. Let me ask you something. The Middle East seems pretty destabilized right now. And the war, if I'm not mistaken, is already here. To be clear, hers is a dream not shared by the Israeli government or by the vast majority of Israelis and Jews. But it's been enough to incite numerous Islamist groups. Hamas has dubbed its October 7 assault on Israel the Al-Aqsa wave and has the Dome of the Rock on its emblem. But this is sacred ground to billions of Muslims globally, not just Hamas terrorists, stresses Imam Mustafa Abu Sway of Al-Aqsa Mosque. Al-Aqsa Mosque belongs to all Muslims. So you'll find reaction from Indonesia to Toronto to New York. That's really given. Al-Aqsa Mosque belongs to all Muslims and the Muslims today are two billion people, two billion people. Simply by performing these acts, are, are these Jewish activists kicking a hornet's nest. They are. They are. A hornet's nest they're kicking all the way to Capitol Hill. So good to see you here in the nation's capital. Those sacred cows were showcased in Washington at a recent prayer gathering. Many evangelicals believe these red heifers will usher Christ's second coming. We need the Messiah to come, right? So for me, the red heifer is red for the blood of Jesus Christ. Back in the West Bank, Mamo says the ceremony could take place any day. But can you understand why Hamas could be outraged by something like this? I cannot understand that even if they are right, why they have to slot and uh, rape people to win their war? Terrorists have been attacking us before we ever dreamed of these cows, he reflects. They don't need them as an excuse to kill. For CBS Saturday Morning, Chris Livesay, Jerusalem. Amazing. The conflict. In amazing. Amazing. Okay, so I had to share with you that soundbite because I'm, like, I shared shared with the with the with the uh, uh, with the portion of scripture that I shared with you in the beginning of this broadcast in Psalm chapter 22. And I am beside myself because it's one thing for orthodox jews to do what you know to do this to do the ceremony with the red heifers uh in expectation for whom they believe they're still waiting for as the messiah it's another thing when the church is involved it's another thing when evangelical christians are involved and not only supporting this but expecting others to believe that this is the truth that we need these red heifers to be sacrificed uh, to bring forth the Messiah. There was a comment that I heard from an evangelical Christian that said that they're really good friends with a particular Orthodox Jew, uh, and uh, they're you know they've decided to uh, be in disagreement with a very small thing out of what they are mostly in agreement with, and that would be their their understanding of, of the Messiah. But then it turned out that the evangelical Christian said, if it turns out that when the Messiah does come, and if it turns out that he can prove that he is the second coming, then we know that as evangelical Christians, we were right. But if he now, but if he's able to prove that this is his very first coming, he never came over 2,000 years ago, but this is his, first, his very first coming, then that would mean that the Orthodox Jew is right and we would now know who the Messiah is. That was from an evangelical Christian publicly at the prayer breakfast. So it's a little concerning. Uh, it is very concerning, actually. Um, because my, I, I, you know, I'm not... <laughs> The church is involved in this. Evangelical Christians and leaders prayed for uh, about four hours before, about three or four hours solid before the speaker was brought up to this particular prayer gathering in Capitol Hill recently. 
And they pretty much eliminated every word of their prayers when they started talking about the red heifers and, and how this will now make the impure pure and how it is needed and then tying it up to scripture in the in the bible in the old testament particular actual scripture that took place at that time that was signifying types and shadows of who we know was to come jesus christ which already came over two thousand years ago as a propitiation of the sin of all mankind so it is um i'm afraid I'm afraid because I know that what this will what, 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 you know what this will mean. This isn't bring in, this isn't a, this isn't going to be a big price. The Christians who believe this, who 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 exchange the truth of Jesus being their Lord and their Messiah, being their sacrifice for the shedding of the blood of bulls and goats that we're told cannot cleanse us from sin that will now have to be offered yearly. They, it will be like eating from the tree. It will be like eating from the tree of eternal life after eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Do you understand? To exchange Jesus, because this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to usher in the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is a terrible day. It doesn't end. It, that's why it's called the day of the Lord. There is a, grieve, a, 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 a grieving that has taken place. You have now entered into ungodliness. Uh, 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 now you're in a forever that you cannot get out of because you exchange the truth for a lot. You exchange the propitiation of the sin of all mankind, Jesus to Christ of Nazareth, the Lamb of God. You exchanged it. You, you fell away from the faith. And you heaped up for yourself teachers because you had itching ears to declare to you um, a very falsely form of eternal redemption, which is not eternal. What I was just saying, you know, redemption, which is a shedding of blood of bulls of gold. Let me let, let me share with you a bit more from the scriptures here. Hebrews chapter nine in the book of Hebrews chapter nine verse eleven. The word of God says, but Christ came as high priest. Jesus Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. That is not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. He entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer, such as a red heifers, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Jesus Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this reason, he is a mediator of the new covenant, which we're going to be celebrating. The Holy Week is next week. By means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions under, under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. So we receive it. We receive this as truth. But now many, are, many in the church are entertaining a belief that is contrary to our own. That we are still waiting on the Messiah. You support the Jewish people, don't you? Well, you're, you know, if you're going to be in support of us, if you're going to be in the same room with us, because, you know, it's, it's, a, it's unlawful for us to even be next to you or eat near you or drink near you just be, because we have our own laws, we have our own sets of mandates and rules that unless you be part of us, you have to kind of bend. You have to do your, comp you know, your compromising where you need to for the sake of our unity, if you will, if you really want to be, uh, you know, my friend. And a little bit, 11, will leaven the whole lump. Before you know it, after, you know, time of indoctrination, bad company corrupts good habits, you're going to be now negotiating with yourself. I don't know if that's the word I'm looking for. I don't think that's the word I'm looking for, Lord. Help me with the word. You're going to be going back and forth with yourself as to, well, I'll just believe, I'll believe Jesus for as long as I can, but it, uh, until it's proven. And so there are right now evangelical Christians in the church that are saying, I'll believe Jesus now, not as my main Lord and Savior, not as my only Lord and Savior, 
Not as, I don't want to say the word mean, forgive me for saying that, Father. I, I, I'll believe in Jesus, not just as, you know, not as my, my one and only Lord and Savior. I'll kind of put him aside, kind of like as a rabbit's foot, lucky rabbit's foot, if you will. And in anticipation to what the Jewish people are waiting for, the Messiah. And once he's proven that he comes in the flesh, in bodily form, and he, sits, and he sits on the Mount of Olives, just as it says in Scripture, because they're going to use Scripture out of context, then and only then will I know that the Jesus who I was serving was not truly the Messiah. He was a type and shadow of what was to come. And that will usher in, like I said, the day of the Lord. There's so much to this. Lord, please thank you for helping me speak. This is despairing. I was in despair as I heard the soundbite that I'm about to share with you right now. It is from the 2024 National Gathering for Prayer and Repentance. And it is approximately five hours. I'm not going to share with you all five hours. It is on YouTube. You can look it up yourself. But I'm going to share with you just a few minutes going into the three minute, uh, three hour and 46 minute mark on this. When they talk, now this is after three hours of solid prayer, fasting for the nation, and I think they were also praying for other nations. It, it, it was very, I'm sure, hopeful, very exciting, very pleasant. Um, it was an amen, very serious in their prayers. It was an obvious thing. They were praying. It was, a, a, it, again, national gathering for prayer and repentance for three straight hours, friends. Then the red heifers were now given a platform to the, you know, the spokespeople for the red heifers were now given a platform to talk about how this will be helping for purification, pretty much for sins, canceling three hours worth of prayer and fasting that was set for this day. Amazing. People don't believe that. They say, no, 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 evangelists, don't say that. That's not true. Their prayers still count. It was for three hours and God heard it. Not when you're sharing, not when you're in communion with something contrary to what you were just praying about. How are you going to pray and cancel out your own prayer with ungodliness that you've invited into your spirit? Listen, let's get into the soundbite. Red heifers, Three hours and 46 minutes into the luncheon, or I call it the luncheon. It's not, I don't even know if they had lunch, but it was for the gathering for prayer of repentance uh, over on Capitol Hill. Here it is. Let me ask you something. When Israel was scattered for 2,000 years in the... Please forgive me. The person that you're listening to right now is, uh, according to them, I believe they said that they were an evangelical Christian. Um, I, I know I'm saying according to them, I believe. I am certain that that's what they said. Um, this this person speaking again is an evangelical Christian, and they're going to say their perspective with regards to the red heifers, um, and then they're going to bring up the Orthodox Jew, which are again two completely different beliefs. So listen to the first the first uh, person here, evangelical Christian speaking. They did say his name, and I'm not going to go back and look for it, but um, you're free to uh, again. It's on YouTube. Here it is. The land was it necessary that Israel. Judah, the tribe of Judah, the lion, would return to the land. Was that necessary? Yes. Is it necessary that on the temple mountain of God, that there be a temple that we worship him there, as it says in Micah 4, is that necessary that we build the land? So the first step on the red heifers is that we were, are going to move towards building that temple. This is the first step, and it has to happen. But my friend... Okay, so first let me say this. The temple... The third temple has been in, in, in talks for quite some time, okay? This is for the Jewish people who they believe it's still, they're still waiting for their Messiah to come. They don't believe many of them. There are Jewish Messianic believers. I'm not talking about them. But there are a lot of Orthodox Jews, for instance, that don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Uh, they probably think that he existed. Some probably believe that he did walk this earth, probably as a political figure or just someone who just went against the Roman uh, Empire at the time, but not the Son of God, for crying out loud. They probably even consider it more than likely. I'm sure they consider it. Some of them blasphemy to even consider that Jesus Christ is the Son of the Most High God. As Christians, we know that he is. We're born again by the Holy Spirit of God. We submitted and surrendered our life to Jesus. For those of us who haven't, so we know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the King of all kings, and he's the Lord of all lords. So 
based on that, we know that when we, when we hear the word temple, we shouldn't be thinking, oh, we need to build a third temple or, or we need to make sure that a third temple is built in the nation of Israel or in Jerusalem for the sake of the Messiah to come and then put Jesus in there for his second coming. Well, it's for Jesus for a second coming. We won't say that too loud. It'll be for you know, the Jews, you know, the Jews Messiah, but we'll just put in ours and just make it sound correct to the evangelical Christians that know and don't know at the same time. We should know that the temple the true temple of God in the times that we're living in since the propitiation of the sin of all, all, all mankind was laid upon Jesus Christ as a lamb of God is our body. Our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so I'm just saying that. We, we, sh we should not be looking for a third temple. We should not be encouraging a third temple. Uh, we should know what the scripture says in the Gospel of Luke chapter 21, that there was a destruction of the second temple. Uh, there was a destruction for a reason. Uh, Jesus Christ, uh, uh, was uh, he, he, he already completed the work. He, 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 went in, he made a way unto the most holies. But hear this from this evangelical Christian. Friends, I want to tell you, all of you in the nations, you need to know something. God had a plan. He, he put his people, Judah, into the nations to suffer because they didn't obey him. Here we are today. We're seeing today we're doing the same thing. But thankfully, we have leaders in Judah that love us. They've reached across to us, and they want to help lead us. And they're reading their word, and they're reading their Bible. And in the Bible, it says, find a red heifer. So they... So this evangelical Christian is saying that we've somehow lost our way, perhaps, and now God has called the leaders of these people to come and get us out of our seclusion, get, a, get us out of our slumber. And so they're kind of saving us. They're helping us. So let's hear them out. God has sent us leaders from the Jewish Orthodox, you know, the, the, those who don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Hear this. This is insane. Let's continue. He called me, and I didn't go get find a red heifer for me. I found the red heifer for every one of you. Because the fathers of faith said, speak to the children in the lands and bring us a red heifer so that we might do this ceremony that leads to honoring our father on the temple mountain. And no. Amen. He said amen after that. That's not true. Sacrificing. Uh, whatever you want to call it, because they don't want to, they're using sacrificing for some, and others are saying, no, it's not a sacrifice, it's a ceremony. Whatever way you want to cut it, okay? The, the bull is going to be slaughtered. It's going to be cut in pieces. I've seen it in the Spirit of God already. This is not good. This We're not honoring God the Father. Oh, God the Father, thank you for this evangelical Christian that's speaking publicly on Capitol Hill recently at the National Gathering for Prayer and Repentance in declaring that we're honoring you. Jesus, are you honored, by the way, for this red heifer sacrifice? Knowing that it represented something that had to be done yearly by the high priest for the children of God, or excuse me, for, for the Hebrew children at the time, um, uh, uh, in, in, in the sight of God, for the shedding of the blood of bulls and goats and the, uh, the sprinkling of the ashes of the red heifer. So, oh, Lord God, we hope that you are okay, that you, this pleases you, because you've been wanting us to do this. Jesus, are you okay with this? <laughs> it's sick. It's ungodly. Let's continue. Is this where we want to honor him, at the mountain where he called for us to honor him? Yes. And when we do that, it's going to break chains. It's going to open things. It's going to bring us back to the faith that we want to be. What do you mean to the faith we want to be? We're supposed to be in the faith already. The faith we're supposed to be in is in the faith of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God, for you must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The book of Hebrews chapter 11. The Bible says in the book of Romans, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if we really truly want to be of the faith, our faith is to be found in Jesus and his words, both rhema and logos, both the written word of God and the spoken word of God. To me, this is astounding. We don't need leaders. I don't need a leader as a believer in Christ that does not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God to help me, lead me to this red heifer ceremony sacrifice thing over in the nation of Israel to proclaim that, uh, you know, that, that we're supposed to, that now we're trying to be in right standing with you, that you are okay with us, and that now our chains can be broken. This is what he just said. Jesus Christ already delivered us from bondage through the shed blood that he did for us at the cross of Calvary over 2,000 years ago. 
we're not to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage, which if we say we push Jesus aside for this red heifer and be okay with this and be in oneness with this and be in unity with this and be of the same mind of this, this is what we're doing. We're pushing Jesus aside and now we're getting ourselves entangled in a yoke of bondage that we will never be able to break out of because we literally, we literally threw away the only one that allowed us freedom to begin with, that literally delivered us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, which is Jesus Christ. Do you understand where this is going? This will usher in the day of the Lord. If the Christian church, I can't say anything about the Jewish, I can't say anything, anything, anything about the Orthodox Jews, those who don't believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God and they're not Christian. I'm not talking about that. Th th this is something that if they decide to do, uh, this is, I, I don't know nothing about that because I'm not an Orthodox Jew. I'm a, I, I'm a born again believer by the Holy Spirit in the son of God, Jesus the Christ. Do you understand? So this is more, the warning is for the church, but it's like, uh, in trying to befriend the Jewish, the Orthodox Jew, they're really bringing the Orthodox Jew into judgment of the day of the Lord for doing something that the Christian already knew not to do. If we're going to be really true friends and love our Jewish brethren and pray really truly for the peace of Jerusalem, we should be kindly, gently, and yet firmly and unapologetically warning them about the uh, consequences of doing such an act, knowing that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world. If anything else, if the Jewish, if, 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 if the Orthodox Jew, if you are, or the unbelieving, and I say the word unbelieving, I mean no disrespect, I, I want to say this as best as I can. If those, those who are Jews who don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God still desires to do this, then someone would have to say over on their end, listen, for the sake of you not putting, you know, putting us under any kind of, you know, any kind of punishment, lest we share in your sins, because you're trying to lay hands on us with all this and, and claim that you're for us and believing in us. We believe our own tenets. We believe, uh, you know, that we're still waiting for the Messiah. We believe that, you know, the Ten Commandments, the Torah, all, all that they say that they believe in. For it to be as holy as they're dubbing it to be and wanting it to be and claiming it to be, they, somebody has to stand up. So I'll go to the, or, you know, the, the Orthodox Jews part, if you will, for them to cut the Christian off, say, get away. You can't be part of this because you believe differently, because you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And we don't because unless you make what we're trying to do, our own uh, ceremony, quote unquote, sacrifice, unpure, impure, whatever. I, that's what I would do if I was an Orthodox Jew. Literally, I would not want... It would be, I cannot rightfully be a friend, be in oneness, unity with someone who believes what they would deem for many of them blasphemy. How dare you, for some they say, how dare you, how dare you claim that Jesus Christ is the son of God? You believe that? Okay, you do well in your own believing, but I don't believe it. And for that sake, we must, you know, be, you know, we must agree to disagree and, and you'd go your way and I'll go mine. If they're truly in belief to what they're saying, and if they truly want to do this in the sight of God, it would almost be, I don't want to say accept it in that manner, but it, it would be more, um, I, I, it, it, almost like safer, if you will. And I don't know if that's proper for me to say, but that's, I'm, tr I'm trying to say this as best as I can. There's a schism here. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fool's game. It's, it's, it's going to go nowhere. This is going to bring in judgment one way or the other, either from the Orthodox Jew side for allowing Christians to, be, you know, to even be part of this and be okay with it, have their kumbaya moment, whatever they're doing, whatever their mindset is on this, or is going to come in from the Christian side for sure because... They did not either speak up and say, no, we cannot partake with you on this. We'll still be your friend or, you know, we'll still love you from afar. We'll still pray for you from afar, but we cannot partake in this red heifer ceremony, sacrificing that you guys are doing because of our belief in the only begotten son of God. And if we partake in this, we will be part of a blasphemy. We will, it will be, it will be a sin upon us because it will be seen as blasphemy before the same God that we believe in, in the Torah as well. Somebody has to do something, and instead, this is becoming a mixture all in the name of. All in the name of what? Unity? God is not mocked. Whatever man sows to the flesh, that he will reap. Whatever, say, whatever man sows to the spirit, that he, he will reap. There are so many involved in this, and it's not good. This is going to bring, I say the word judgment, but let's be very clear on the type of judgment. It will bring in the day of the Lord, the great and terrible day of the Lord, I'm telling you. I don't think it's any coincidence that the solar eclipse is marking a big X over the state of Texas, knowing that these red heifers have come from the state of Texas. That's going to happen on April 8th, 2024, this solar eclipse. I don't think it's any coincidence that we're going to see a blood red moon on March 25th. Literally, all of North America will be able to see it. 
check your time. Timeanddate.com has the time that you'll be able to see it depending on where you're located here in, in, in the United States. Oh, but it's gonna, you know, the solar eclipse, it, 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 I, you know, they, the, you know, 2017 had a solar eclipse over uh, America, the great, uh, the great American eclipse. And, and now we're in the year 2024, seven years apart. Seven years apart. Reminds me of, of, of the account of Joseph, where there were seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. But in this case, it was seven years of repentance, seven years of getting your house in order, seven years of getting your words straight, seven years of making sure that you're on the side that you're supposed to be on. Whether you're an Orthodox Jew or a born-again Christian believer, because if you're sitting in the middle on this, you're sitting on the fence, and you're inviting this, you're mixing it up, and you're to declare this as holy and consecrated unto God, being an Orthodox Jew or what have you, and, and, and yet you're be, you know... Um, it's like God's not hard on this. I don't think he's hard. I know I don't see him as hard It's like we get him hard when we try to manipulate What we know of him Does that make sense? We're living in the last days We're living in the last days somebody has to do something about this I'm not even saying something about the red heifer ceremony thing being stopped I'm not saying that because I'm not an Orthodox Jew. I'm not part of their belief to me, it should be stopped when it comes to the Christians being part of it. The evangelical church being part of it. That's the sin. That's the sin. And for the sake of the Orthodox Jews, somebody say, get them away from us. We cannot have them partake in this with us. Let's not take any donations from them. Let's not take any, because this thing has to be perfect. We have to make sure that all the tools, all the instruments of the third temple, we have to make sure that the red heifers can have any white hair or gray hair, or black hair. They have to, everything has to be perfect. And yet we're going to have... Evangelical Christians who we or don't even are not in the same belief system, which is the main thing is belief according to the first, very first and second commandment, partake of this in uh, with us in agreement and solidarity. Are you, that's come on, that's that's a, that's a um, that's a mockery. It's 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 already a failed thing. It already is is impure. Let's continue. I got a little bit more of the soundbite. Please don't be offended at the preacher. Okay. But this is not good. So my friend Rabbi Itzak called me in Texas. He said, Byron, we need to find the red heifer. He said, we need to look into Numbers 19 and we need to do what the, what the Lord said, what God said. And so that's what we did. So Saki, can you tell us about Numbers 19 and what that means? Okay. Yeah. Shalom. So Saki now is an Orthodox Jew. So we just got done hearing the, from the Evangelical Christian. And this is an Orthodox Jew. And I guess they're very good friends, which is okay, amen, you know. But let's hear now what the Orthodox Jew has to say. Um, thank you, Jim. Thank you, Byron. Um, you know, it's a strange commandment that uh, actually more than 2,000 years nobody uh, deal with. And uh, when we start to make a research, we found that there is a red angus. If you are a farmer from Kansas, Texas, you will know exactly what is this. And uh, I call my friend Byron and I told him, listen, we are looking for red, as it's written in the Bible, Numbers 19. Uh, you have to find a red heifer without blemish, without white or black hair that never walk. And let bring it to Jerusalem, not as a sac sacrifice. The red heifer is not sacrifice. The red heifer is a ceremony. We use the red heifer, we burn it together with Aesop and other things. So they use the red heifer and they burn it. I don't know if they're going to cut it in pieces. I think that's what they did in, in, in the scriptures in the Old Testament. But in burning it, they say it's not a sacrifice. It's a ceremony. Let's continue. And then mix the ash with water from the spring. And then we can became to be pure. What is pure? What is unpure? It's complicated to understand. But I will just give the, the you know, the, the easy explanation is that if you connected, if you touch, if you was at the room with a dead, which means out of life, you became to be unpure. And the way, the only way, to be pure again is to get a, a little sprinkling of, uh, of red heifer uh, water. And we start to make the, the search in Dallas. We put an invitation in, uh, in the magazine of uh, Farmer, in, 
And All right. So, yeah. So he's basically saying his perspective. What the red heifer represents for them is that once it's ceremonially, they don't say the word sacrifice, but I think I'm okay to say the word sacrifice in this. Once it's ceremonially um, handled, uh, then they will be, it will be able to basically cleanse you, make you from impure to pure. This being talked about at the 2024 National Gathering for Prayer and Repentance after three hours of solid prayer and fasting. Hebrews chapter 10, for the law having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect for then would they not have ceased to be offered for the worshipers once purified would have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Listen. I fear that with this mixture, if they press on with this sacrifice and it proves itself as acceptable before God that a Messiah does come, whom the Jews will claim as their Messiah and whom Christians will fall away from the faith for to be their new Messiah, it will usher in the day of the Lord. I've seen the day of the Lord in visions God has given me that were very fright, frightening and terrible um, since 2019. This will be because Solomon's temple will be um, reestablished uh, uh, again in this third temple. And it will literally cause them to, the, 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 uh, the moon to be turned into blood and the sun to be darkened. And it will be for a time that the air itself will be changed. The very atmosphere will not be what we know now. It will be the day of the Lord. A day will be like a thousand years. People will wonder when this day will be over, only for night to come and for it to be just as terrible. That will be part of the curse of the law. I've seen the day of the Lord in that in this, um, this convoluted um, thing that will turn out to be an abomination will bring in with it a Jesus that we know nothing about. A very dark and evil Jesus that will seek to bring forth a judgment because he was crucified not once but twice. And people will seek to scorn him and mock him. Those who even be claim to be part of Solomon's lineage will seek will seek to scorn and mock him as he's on the cross again this time in bodily form on this planet but in a very dark way i've seen this in visions and it will be a very terrible time a very frightful time but because the people that will be mocking and scorning him will no longer be people like we know today they will have turned aside they will be i almost want to say like fallen angelic beings demons still in but 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 in human bodily in, in, in human body form because now they will now be, live in eternity on this planet that will be ongoing it will be hell on earth does that make sense a damn it will be damnation on earth it will be destruction on earth and i, I know that may not make sense but i'm just sharing with you what i saw in dreams and visions that god showed me if this actually happens and is so callingly accept it in its impurity and that it will be proven that it is accepted when again a messiah or their messiah comes and many even christians will fall away from the faith i want to reiterate the word of the lord here when it comes to the truth of the sacrifice hebrews chapter 10 verse 5 says uh, yeah, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5 says, Therefore, when Jesus came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will, O God. 
Previously saying, sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin you do not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first, that he may establish the second, by that we will have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The Holy Spirit also witnesses to us. For after he had said this, this is a covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds. I will write them. Then he adds their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember no more. Now where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. So what was just talked about in the 2024 National Gathering for Prayer and Repentance in accordance to the scripture that they decided to pull up, Numbers chapter 19, they're saying, listen, if you're going to be part of us, if you're going to be in on it with us, we got to let you know that in partaking in on this uh, ceremony, you pretty much would be in agreement that in order for you to be uh, in, you know, pure from your impurity, because listen, many of these Jewish people believe that believing in Jesus is impure. You partaking of the red heifer sacrifice will make you now pure. But the thing is that it will have to now be done yearly. And what I saw in these visions of, of the day of the Lord is, and, and the reenactment of Salem, uh, of, uh, um, uh, and, and the rebuilding of Solomon's temple, it, it was so dark and was so ungodly that when they run out of specific animals to, to, to sacrifice on a yearly basis, and it will no longer be a year as we know a year to be 365 days or what the Hebrew calendar considers a year. It will be uh, it will be too short. A day will be like a thousand years and a thousand years as on to a day. Just when you thought, OK, cool, I just sacrifice uh, this bull, uh, you know, this goat, this lamb. And we have another year or a thousand years. God, that God uh, of the of, of the destruction, it will be an ungodly God, the almighty. But in a bad way, in a very bad way, he will say, no, nope, that's not enough. That barely lasted for a minute, I need another blood sacrifice, not just a sacrifice of praise and worship. That's no longer part of this new time, this new order, this new age that you so desired because you cast away the only sacrifice that was able to truly have the remission of sin for all mankind. You, but you, 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 you put that as nothing. You trampled the blood of my son as nothing. Now, because you wanted this, the one sacrifice that you just gave that you thought was good enough five minutes ago has now, it's not, I need another sacrifice and it will be so fearful that they will know it will go from sacrificing animals and, and now it will be so bad it'll be like the days of Enoch as well the animals will now start to cry up and rise up because they're gonna say wait a minute we have a kingdom it's the animal kingdom kingdom rising up against kingdom nation rising up against nation we're not going to be part of this we're putting our, our stop to this we also have a lion we also have other members of our kingdom that says no to this you start sacrificing your own selves Oh, but animals can't speak, evangelists. Listen, we're living in the last days. A serpent was able to speak to Eve and caused the fall of mankind. A donkey was able to speak to a prophet that was going mad because he was doing ungodliness to God's people at the time. You don't think the animals will be able to speak when all hell's breaking loose? Literally, damnation will be rampant on the earth because of this sin, this abomination, this blasphemy that will take place when Christians and these Jews come together as if in a kumbaya moment and neither one of them are serious but God is? You don't want God to play that card, that hand. He could be very shrewd. We don't, we don't want that. Let's just abstain. And if your church is not going to abstain from this, they're part of this blasphemy. Knowing that Jesus Christ is their Lord, but they're part of this blasphemy to be okay with the blood of bulls and goats. You say, wait a minute, church, uh, pastor, whatever. I'm abstaining from this. Jesus is my high shepherd. He's my high priest. I'm not going to go with this. He is a sacrifice for me and my family. And he rose again on the third day, defeating death, hell, and the grave. I'm not going to be for this. You're not going to put me in destruction. You're not going to be, you're not going to put me under the judgment hand of God on this because it's going to bring God's judgment. You're not going to put me in the day of the Lord on this. It's an ungodly thing. This is very dangerous. This is terribly bad. That's why I was so grieved. Do you guys understand why I started to the um uh, you know you know why I under, uh, excuse me. Do you guys understand why I started off the broadcast with Psalm chapter twenty two? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? Because there, it, it, this is so terribly grieving. It's like it, it, you're literally crucifying Jesus anew, but not in. A, this is bad. I want to cry. I, I'm heaving within myself. 
It's not good. So now what happens? It's going to happen quick. The day of the Lord, if this continues and the destruction that will take place because of this, people are going to be sacrificing people and it'll be like the, 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 the times of the Mayans. Remember the times of the Mayans? They were chopping people's heads off and rolling them down this big old temple of theirs in Mexico. There was not enough blood that could be shed to appease their God. Not enough heads that could be chopped off that could appease their God. They were drunk on the blood of men and women that they would just chop off their heads and throw down those temple steps. This is the type of God we're going to bring forth on this planet in this blasphemy, in the mixing of this. If Christians join in with the with these um, let's say you know with you know with these Jews who don't believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, and if the Jews do I have to say this? Do I have to say this? If they mix in with the Christians when they don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and yet they're going to do something that's so <laughs> a Torah, the first five books of the of the Bible, so law, so law. Okay, do your law, do it. You want to do it? You I can't say anything about it, but you chop off the Christians where they stand. Don't let them partake of it. Let you be brought into judgment for having them be, because they believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, is contrary to one another. Red heifers and the sacrifice of Jesus. Red heifers and the sacrifice of Jesus. They're contrary to one another. And you're trying to bring the two into one. It's a Nephilim spirit. You're trying to bring in the days of Noah. You're literally combining the two into one. It's no different than putting pig DNA into a human or human DNA into a rat. All in the name of unity. I put the warning out, Father. I put it out there. You've been speaking to me for five years. I, I, got, I was given a five-year time frame on this. And I spoke in fear and in trembling. As I worked on my own salvation in fear and trembling on this. Father God, please help. It'll be reenactments during the... I've seen the day of the Lord. I've seen the destruction in the Spirit. I've seen it. The Lord has shown me within the past five years. There won't be enough sacrifice. The animal kingdom will rise up saying, no, you're not going to sacrifice any, us anymore. And, and people will not have to be sacrificed. It'll be a terrible sacrifice because one minute will not be long enough before the next sacrifice is needed. And then you have groups and underground groups coming up from the underground and, 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 and gangs and spirits of demons that will be operating through children trying to claim territory that... It's going to be so like, I don't know, I can't even say from back in the day, it'll be a whole new, it'll be a thing, a thing that we, we know nothing, we don't want to know anything about. It's very dark and very, very heavy. Principalities, powers, and rulers of the darkness of this age, spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places will literally have their rule and reign on this planet. All because we, 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 we didn't trust the prophetic word of God. All because we brought in destructive doctrines into, into the church, the body of Christ. We can't do it, guys. We just can't do it. That's why this is fearful. This is why I'm afraid. This is concerning to me. It'll be... Anything that, it'll, I, I, do I even say this? It's almost like anything that was saved will now be unsaved? How are you going to put an offering for your own sin when Jesus was supposed to be your sacrifice? But you were partakers of this red heifer ceremony and now, uh, you know, Jesus says, I can't, you just cut me off. We're so afraid of God cutting us off, but we don't think about the fact that you, you cut him off with this. He can't honor what he did for you, but now it's going to make him a, a blasphemy? It's going to make him an abomination? Dear God, help. Thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit. I don't know what else to say. I pray that we hear the word of the Lord. I pray that we not, I pray that we don't do this. That if one does it, that the Christians don't do it. That they're not partakers of it. And I know that some of them, there's going to be, they're not going to listen to me. I wasn't at this national gathering for prayer and repentance. I don't get invited to any of these things because either they know or they don't know. But God puts me in the little camera and this little church ministry that I have to broadcast. And oh yes, for the past 14 years, I've been allowed to broadcast to a lot of people all throughout the world. According to the numbers I've seen in my statistics, millions. That doesn't mean they're all saved. 
That doesn't mean they're really hearing the word of the Lord. That doesn't mean that they're actually abiding. I pray that they do. I pray that they are. I want them to. I pray on my face. I've laid consecrated. I fasted and prayed for these people. I don't know if they do. But I pray they do. And I pray you do too. If you're going to declare Jesus Christ as Lord, you better keep him declared that way. You better not toss your faith away. Don't be like Esau giving up his birthright for a measly bowl of soup. To the Jewish Orthodox person, it may not be a measly bowl of soup. It's all they have. To them, they're saying, okay, don't call it measly. This is my I'm waiting for the Messiah. Listen, I'm not here to disrespect or respect you. I'm just talking about from the perspective as a born-again, Holy Spirit-filled believer to the church that are mingling with this. You do you. I'm doing me and I'm doing this on behalf of the church as an ambassador of Jesus Christ. As an ambassador of Jesus Christ. According to the word of God. I know I'm in an hour and 11 minutes, but I think I got to go in a little bit more. I don't know if there was even any more to the article. Yeah, there is a bit more. They're saying during a recent public appearance, Mamo explained that we are very close to the third year of these cows. He said, if there's any mathematicians here, you can understand that we are very close to the third year of these cows, which means that with the help of God, we will get permission from God and from the people to make the ceremony and then we can be pure. Okay, that's them. This should have nothing to do with born again Christians. This should have nothing to do with the evangelical church that not only that, that not only was saved by the blood of Jesus, but was able to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit and miracle signs and wonders throughout the church. That generation that we remember with our parents and our grandparents, not mine because mine weren't saved, but for many of you. That you were able to know about the Smith Wigglesworth and 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 um the um uh, the you know Catherine Kuhlmans and the Billy Grahams and 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 the uh, and the A.A. A. Allens and all these people from back in the day. The fact that they were able to operate in miracle signs and wonders was proof that the Holy Spirit was being poured out in the last days. Don't you have to make them come up from the grave and not have to pay for that because you wanted to partake of a red heifer sacrifice, pushing aside the blood of Jesus, trampling it as a common thing. I'm telling you, the day of the Lord is not. I don't know. I'm the only one hearing this. I think I'm the only one hearing this. I don't have a congregation in front of me. I mean, I got you. You all were tuning in, but I have no one else. I probably have the cat next door. I don't even know if there's a cat that lives next to me next door, but I'm just making a, a point. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm afraid. I'll be honest with you. I know God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I know that word. I know the spirit of God and I know the word of the Lord. But I know what this is too. And you, you ain't going to put me in a position like I don't see this the way, I, I, the way I've been shown. I've been shown some stuff on this. I wasn't given another word to preach. When I first started preaching 14 years ago, I already made a plan that I was going to preach about the grace of God. I've been hearing and studying messages and was already preparing because God put me in, in through training and teaching personal. And yes, I went to Bible college, but I'm talking about also his, mainly his own personal teaching, his own teaching by the spirit of God. So I went through teaching and preaching and instruction and discipline, consecration, sanctification by the Holy Spirit. That by the time I was ready to preach, I already knew what I was going to preach. And it turned out something else came out of my mouth and it was the end times. Something else came out of my mouth and it was the day of the Lord. What came out of my mouth was about the signs of the times and the end of the age and how people needed to be saved. And it was nothing about what I, what I thought was going to be preached. And he still has me preaching this today. And there's not one congregation that would not want to tell this to. And yet all doors are closed for a reason. I believe some are seeing in secret. So what good is that? You know, what good is it to have a light in the closet when the whole house is dark and they keep on bumping into the walls and they can't see where they're going? But at least you're able to go into the secret closet and you know where to find the light. That's an issue. That's an issue. Last month, all Israel News reported that the Temple Institute wants to conduct a sacrifice before Passover 2024. As of now, four of the heifers remain blemish-free, and according to the Temple Institute rabbis, they hope to carry out the ceremony before Passover 2024. They right now are waiting for confirmation. I don't know what their confirmation is. I'm thinking it's something very spiritual, very maybe Kabbalistic in nature, okay? In other words, occultic. 
uh, and they're calling out maybe for the sun, the moon, the stars to prove, maybe they're calling for the Messiah to come himself and put his finger on, 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 on their table, like uh, the finger of God was uh, wrote the Ten Commandments on, on, on Mount Sinai in front of Moses, or the way that the finger of God was able to write on the wall uh, to, to, you know, to King Belshazzar in judgment. I don't know what they're wanting in proof. But they're going to get something. I know this. A solar eclipse is going to happen on April 8th over the state of Texas, marking a big X. We're not the only ones. I know. But I'm just making a point. Marking a big X over the state of Texas where these red heifers happen to come from. This year, the Jewish people will celebrate Passover on April 22nd. That is about a month away, approximately a month from today. During a recent broadcast, Glenn Beck also discussed the possibility that a red heifer sacrifice could happen in the very near future. The following is an excerpt from a transcript of that broadcast. He said, and I quote, If you're going to rebuild a temple, you need to purify it. And purifying it, according to the book of Numbers, chapter 19, is a heifer, a red heifer ceremony that results in the creation of ash and water mixture. And that cleanses the entire nation of Israel from ritual impurity. Now listen, that sounds okay. So for some people they say, okay, that's for the Israelis, for those who, who, who are still waiting for the Messiah. But what do you say when a lot of the church who are evangelical Christians are claiming themselves to be the new Israel, the new Jerusalem? Well, we're Israel, which I hate replacement theology. I hate it. I really do. I, evangelist Anita Martir Rivera, from, from Emoaf Church and Open Your Eyes people, hate replacement theology. I hate it. How dare you try to claim a birthright, an identity that's not yours? How dare you? I call that, uh, don't, don't they have a, 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 a name for that? Um, uh, they, they call it identity theft. I hate it. The Jews are Jews. The Hebrews are Hebrews. The Egyptians are Egyptians. The Africans are Africans. You get my point. You can't claim to be is the new Israel. We're, we're, we're the church. We're the new Israel. No, you're not. Now, if you're Israeli then and you're a Christian and you're a part of the church, then amen. Praise the Lord. But that's not what a lot of the church is saying. They believe in replacement theology. Anyway, my point is, is that because of that, they will. a lot of them will be partakers of this ceremony. It usually took place at the Mount of Olives where they are planning on doing this again in the coming days. It is essential for all aspects of the temple and temple worship to take place. In addition, anyone participating in temple worship would be required to be sprinkled with the ash water. Whoa. Beyond that, even without the presence of a physical temple, the ceremony would be would allow the general population to be ritually cleansed and remove much of the religious prohibition for a Jewish presence on the Temple Mount. When are they planning on doing it? Well, they imported these red heifers before October 7th, right? We know that. We know that Hamas said that this was going to, this was part of the reason because they're going to use the red heifers to purify the temple, which is desecration to them. Purifying them so they can then actually go up and even if there's no temple, they can pray as if they were in the temple, as if they were in the temple. And they're going to do this Passover weekend, so Easter weekend more likely. There's been a lot of speculation on social media that a red heifer sacrifice could potentially take place on March 29th because, according to some, the Sabbath of the red heifer begins at sundown that very evening. Let me share with you that portion of the report. Shabbat Hara for Hebrew year 5784 begins at sundown on Friday 29th, March 2024 and ends at nightfall on Saturday 30th, March 30th, 2024. This corresponds to Parashat Zaf. Shabbat Parah, which is a Sabbath of the red heifer, takes place on the Shabbat before Shabbat HaKadosh in preparation for Passover. Numbers, the book of Numbers, chapter 19, verse 1 through 22, describes the Parah Aduma, which is a red heifer, in the Jewish temple as part of the manner in which the Kohanim and the Jewish people purified themselves so that they would be ready, pure, to sacrifice for the Korban Pisak. Now, it's not been able to, I don't know if there's been any found, finding of any confirmation that a sacrifice will happen on March 29th, okay? That I can tell you it's confirmed. So we're not sure if we will see anything happen on that date or not, but uh, it's interesting. And it looks like a real possibility. We must know that the Temple Institute fully does intend to conduct a red heifer sacrifice at some point though this year, 2024. And when that happens, Israel's enemies are going to go haywire. CBS News reported Hamas has actually admitted that the red heifers were one of the reasons why they even attacked Israel on October 7th. So once Israel's enemies realize that a red heifer has been sacrificed, they're going to go absolutely crazy. And this will definitely heighten a war to a new level. So this is a really big deal. Friends, I, I don't know what else to say. I, I hope I made, 
did, did I make my point across? Is the thank you, Lord, for being with me. Maybe I'm behind. Maybe it started already. I don't know. I know this, that the day of the Lord is at hand. Listen, I, I want to end the broadcast with a couple of portions of scripture pertaining to the day of the Lord, if you would so allow me. Zephaniah. Actually, let me go to, uh, yeah, Zephaniah first. We'll do stuff. Okay, excuse me. Zephaniah. Ah, there we go. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 14 through 15. Says the following. No, no, no. No, no, no. Let me read it in context, and I may end up with this particular scripture. Now, I'll give you the rest. You can study on your own time. Zephaniah chapter 1. Verse 1, the word of the Lord which came to Zephaniah, the son of Cushi, the son of Gedaliah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hezekiah, in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah. I will utterly consume everything from the face of the land, says the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the birds of the heavens, the fish of the sea, and the stumbling blocks along with the wicked. I will cut off man from the face of the land, says the Lord. I will stretch out my hand against Judah and against all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. I will cut off every trace of Baal from this place. The names of the idolatrous priests with the pagan priests, those who worship the host of heaven on the, on the housetops, those who worship and swear oaths by the Lord, but who also swear by Milcom. Those who have turned back from following the Lord and have not sought the Lord nor inquired of him. Be silent in the presence of the Lord, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord has prepared a sacrifice, he has invited his guest. And it shall be in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children, and all such as are clothed with foreign apparel. In the same day I will punish all those who leap over the threshold, who fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. And there shall be on that day, saith the Lord, that the sound of a mournful cry from the fish gate, a wailing from the second quarter, and a loud crashing from the hills, wail, you inhabitants of Maktish. For all the merchant people are cut down, all those who handle money are cut off. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will stretch, that I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish the men who are settled in complacency, who say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do evil. Therefore their goods shall become booty, and their houses a desolation. They shall build houses, but not inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards, but not drink their wine. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hastens quickly. The noise of the day of the Lord is bitter. There the mighty men shall cry out. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of devastation and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet and alarm against the fortified cities and against the high towers. I will bring distress upon men, and they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like refuse. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he will make speedy riddance on, of all those who dwell in the land. Now listen, you may say, is there a way of escape out of this? It is, and it's not through the shedding of those red heifers. It is uh, on repentance. Gather yourselves together, yet ga yes, gather together, O undesirable nation, before the decree is issued, or the day passes like chaff. Before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger comes upon you, seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth, who have upheld his justice. Seek righteousness, seek humility. It may be that you will be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. Well, there's hope in that. There's God in that. Praise God. Friends, I want to say thank you. Other scriptures pertaining to the day of the Lord. Very important. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 through 3. Zephaniah chapter 1. Actually, I just shared with you Zephaniah. Forgive me. Isaiah chapter 24, verse 21 through 22. The book of Joel chapter 2, verse 1 through 2. 
Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1 through 8, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 through 12, Luke chapter 21, verse 36, Amos chapter 5, verse 18 through 20, Revelation chapter 16, verse 15 through 16, Joel chapter 2, verse 30 through 32. Friends, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. As always, it is a privilege and a pleasure to bring to you all the word of the Lord. Normally it is a privilege and a pleasure. Right now it is a privilege and a disconcerningness. So just call it that. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Let's see what the word disconcerning is. Make sure I'm saying it correctly. Disconcerning, right? Causing one to feel unsettled. I think that about, this is very disconcerting from the minister because it's very disturbing, very troubling, worrying what is about to take place if this actually takes place. May God be with you and help you in all things to come. Father, we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Friends, uh, I want to invite you to learn more about me and my church ministry by logging on to my website at www.emoaf.org, E-M-O-A-F.org. Um, there you're going to find support, information, all sorts of tools that will help you in your walk in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, if uh, I also want to invite you to um, donate towards the work of this online church ministry. Your donations help make the work of this ministry possible. Also, if you or someone you know are in need of a letter of religious exemption, you can email me personally and directly at anita at emof.org, A-N-I-T-A at E-M-O-A-F dot O-R-G. Until the next broadcast, may God bless you and show you what you need to see so that you can walk circumspectly, redeeming the time, because truly, the days are evil. God bless you. Bye-bye.